Hi guys, so let's now take a look at economies and diseconomies of scale. So these economies uh, of scale really refer to the fact that large firms can produce output at lower unit costs than smaller firms. Now generally speaking there's two clear reasons why these economies of scale are likely to occur. Firstly, it could be about cost advantages that a large firm can generate against a smaller firm. And secondly, it could be about technical expertise based uh, advantages that can also be uh, generated by a larger firm. So let's take a look at these different sources. Uh, these are all internal economies of scale, which are all just about growing output levels uh, to actually exploit these economies of scale. So such examples would include purchasing or buying in bulk. If you buy in bigger quantities, you get bigger discounts and a lower average price per unit. You see that in the supermarket. If you buy a larger container of milk, you will get a much, much better price than if you buy a smaller container of milk price per litre that is of course. Right, then you've got marketing economies of scale. So when it comes to marketing economies of scale, here you're talking about perhaps a, uh, a national chain of restaurants which decides to take out a full page advert in a newspaper. In doing so, it can divide the cost of that advertising by each of its restaurants across the country. That means the average cost of that marketing is much, much lower of course. Uh, we've also got specialisation or division of labour which can take place. Now there is some overlap with the uh, technical economies of scale here, but it does provide a big cost advantage that that repetition, the breakdown of the assembly line can really help generate big gains in efficiency and lead to much, much lower unit costs. Uh, Next up, we've got financial economies of scale. This simply refers to the fact that larger firms will borrow more money in larger quantities uh, and therefore they will often get it at a cheaper interest rate uh, or perhaps as they become a much larger company, a public limited company, they can raise finance through, sh through share sales. That again provides relatively easy access to finance for these companies. Uh, and much cheaper access as well. Next up, moving on to our technical advantages. Okay, so uh, the technical economies that can be exploited might be about specialist capital goods which are invested in, which can really help. Uh, firstly, the specialization of that factory perhaps, but it will really help to reduce average unit costs, of course, and boost output. And then we've got managerial, the fact that you can uh, recruit specialist managers within particular divisions. So that again is another uh, technical technical economy of scale, okay, or a technical advantage. Now there are also external uh, economies of scale that a firm can exploit, and this is really about the growth of the industry overall. Uh, so this refers to the location. So perhaps it could be uh, about a heritage-based product such as Scotch whiskey. Um, whiskey coming from Scotland is then known as Scotch and that does provide certain value to it. But it can also be about the location being uh, very cheap in terms of the factors of production as to where that product is being assembled perhaps. Uh, secondly, it could be access to skilled labour. Now, uh, Longbridge in Birmingham has long been uh, known for its uh, car assembly and car manufacturing uh, that has taken place and as such uh, for firms that wanted to re-establish themselves in that area uh, and develop their capacity there they had access to skilled labour in such an area because of the industry which was previously there. Now we can see these economies of scale being exploited of course as the long run average uh, total cost curve falls. These are increasing returns to scale, of course. Now, increasing returns to scale, you might increase uh, your factor, factor inputs by 100%, but you may generate a 200 or 300% increase in your total output level. And as such, you have much lower unit costs. Now, you later on experience diseconomies of scale, of course, when the firm grows too large and output is too high. Now, there's three clear reasons as to why these are likely to happen. Now, while these economies of scale tend to be quite quantitative and you can easily assess their values, 
and the impact they can have. This economies tend to be more qualitative. Uh, so it tends to be about other things which are, are more difficult to actually uh, prescribe numbers to. So, for instance, it could be about poor communication or poor coordination of activities. So as an organisation becomes bigger, the organisational structure becomes bigger and that affects communication. Of course, I'm sure you've all played Chinese whispers at some point as an example of that. That may cause problems coordinating activities. And it can lead to low motivation where those at the bottom of the uh, organisation feel as if they are uh, completely separate from those at the top of the organisation. So let's round this all up in style as we uh, so frequently do and check out some evaluation points that we'd be able to consider. So if economies of scale are so important, why do small firms continue to survive and even thrive? Well, it could be about... Uh, the importance of customer service that is provided could be about exploiting niche markets. This is why you still have independent tailors providing tailored suits, uh, wedding dresses, uh, wedding cakes, etc. Uh, small firms can perhaps also be more agile and adept at exploiting new markets as they develop, perhaps due to technology uh, changes. Um, also, does technology actually mean that all, can, all firms can actually exploit economies of scale potentially through digitization. And when you sell a digital product, of course, it's replicated at almost zero marginal cost. Um, finally, what about the importance of good management? The importance of good management in avoiding those potential economies, uh, diseconomies of scale for the largest type of organizations, which might include perhaps monopolies. Okay, so some excellent evaluative points there. Guys, I hope that's been useful. Look forward to seeing you next time.